Whoa, hello there. Oh, shit, my knees. Whoa, didn't see you there. So, <laughs> I wanted to make a quick follow-up video to the Mulby video I made two years ago on getting copyright striked for the first time. And um, for some reason, people still come to that video for God knows why. Probably because they just got copyright striked. And for those people, I wanted to make a more helpful and informative video than one that is just me ranting and crying for 10 minutes straight. Hey, so for some reason, I remember this video being way worse than it was. It's actually only three minutes and not that bad. But anyways, just didn't want to shit on myself too hard for no reason. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's hopefully this video. And um, just to outline things real quick, we are going to first go into a bit of background on uh, Japanese copyright and then some never before seen information on who actually mole beat the person copyright striking your videos are and how we can use this information to protect yourself from future copyright. Search for Molebeat on Google and you will find a number of YouTube and Reddit results that may or may not be helpful, but just to save you some time, the only things I've garnered from these are that one, once you've been copyright striked or claimed, the only thing you can do is dispute it via YouTube's built-in form and you're probably not gonna have much luck because fair use does not exist in Japan. So they're completely in their right to do whatever the fuck they want to your video. But Oliver, what do you mean fair use doesn't exist in Japan? I meant what I said and I said what I meant. The long and the short of it is that there's no such thing as general fair use in Japan, only specific exceptions to the rule. Personal use, library, quoting, news report, education. Backing up your computer so you can repair it are included. The fuck is wrong with Japan? But your one hour video about the erectile dysfunction arc of Mushoku Tensei is probably not. This might seem strange given that Japan is basically the doujinshi capital of the world. Doujinshi meaning fan-made manga, games, art, often using an IP that they don't own. How do they get away with this when your YouTube video can't? Well, in Japan, doujinshi is pretty well recognized and pretty culturally accepted as just a thing that happens and also as a pretty large market. In other words, while there's no explicit legal protection for doujinshi, there are cultural and economic protections in place that let people make whatever the fuck they want. Your videos and my videos are not afforded these protections. So again, we ask, who is Molebeat? And if you keep scrolling through these Google results, eventually you will find this link to a DNB entry for Molebeat. And there you will find a link to the Molebeat official website. So this homepage blurb makes it sound like they do a lot of things in addition to copyright protection, but the rest of the website begs to differ. At least going off the website, it's pretty clear that their main business is in copyright because that's all they really talk about. Firstly, this copyright protection tab that basically just says copyright infringement bad, Molebeat protects you from copyright infringement. And then this recruitment information tab basically just repeats that. All of this is pretty whatever, we kind of already know that, but what really struck me as interesting was this before and after joining the company testimonial page. The first is from a 30-year-old woman named t Sun, who used to work as a support rep for an anime merch store and used to do a number of administrative tasks um, with a lot of overtime and apparently did not have a very good time there. But now at Molebeat, she is mo mostly responsible for searching and deleting illegally uploaded videos and music and preparing reports for clients, I guess, about the things she's deleted that month. Um, and she doesn't have nearly as much overtime. The second one is from s who's a 22-year-old uh, sal salary woman and sounds like a pretty similar story. Used to work as a cashier on a sales floor. Not nearly as much overtime, but now her main task is deleting illegal videos and doing the same kind of reporting. And it sounds like despite not having a lot of technical experience, she's been able to find some kind of home at Molebeat. These testimonials was kind of eye-opening for me because it made me realize we are not dealing with trained professionals using state-of-the-art web scraping tools to pull down your video and automatically analyze whether there is anime in it. That's YouTube's job. We are not dealing with AI big data machine learning experts who algorithmically find and eliminate your anime videos. We are dealing with people like T-San and S-San who probably hop onto YouTube, use the literal search bar, and then manually watch the video to see if there's any copyrighted material in there. 
The point I'm trying to get across is that Molebeat is not Big Brother. If you go to their address, Molebeat is a small office in the middle of Shibuya City next to Cyber Consultant Incorporated, a 3 out of 5 star real estate agent, and a literal sweatshop. These are the people we're dealing with. The website hasn't been updated since 2019, which you could say means they actually might be using more up-to-date methods than listed here. What? But something tells me it's more likely to just be neglect. Okay, so <laughs> now that we know who Wolby is and that they're not using big brain engineering techniques to find and destroy your videos, what does that mean for how we avoid copyright? Well, I think the first thing um, and most nice thing at least for me is that when you use a scene from an animated video, you don't need to worry about trying to make like small changes to it to try to avoid manual copyright detection. So uh, flipping it, rotating and zooming it on in a bit, adding a border or doing that thing where you put it inside a mini CRT TV uh, inside your video. Um, I don't think any of that really does anything, maybe for the automatic content ID system, which is still important, but um, for trying to avoid, you know, T-Son or S-Son finding your video or people like them rather, um, I don't think there's any point bothered with that. So I think that's a good thing to know because these things actively detract from the video when you do them and they're also really annoying to do as a creator. So that's good. Um, number two is that, um, Kind of uh, by the same notion. So when we talk about fair use, generally people say that if your content is transformative enough, that it's okay for fair use because you've added something significant to the work to make it a new thing. But these Japanese companies do not care. If you use the work, um, it will be a potentially copyright strike, right? So what does that mean? Well, in order to be transformative enough, you would have to basically make an anime scene unrecognizable if you wanted to use it. And the only example I can really think of somebody who does this is Kurosai, who basically makes, I don't even know what the, what the fuck he calls videos, like anime parody videos, but they use like six or seven different anime at the same time in any given scene. Um, so I think even somebody like Giga, right? Even Giga struggles with copyright despite, despite how transformative the stuff he makes is. So, uh, again, this is not a bad thing. I think if you want to be transformative, um, go ahead, but there's no, there's no need to be transformative if you're only doing it to correct yourself a copyright because it's, it's not going to really make a huge difference. Um, so that, that's that. Uh, number three is that if you use a scene from a show, you want to make sure to keep it short. Um, one, to avoid the automatic content ID system, but two, um, to avoid something manually scrubbing through your video and finding that clip by chance. So those are, I wouldn't say it makes a huge difference, but it does make a difference. And it also makes it easier to um, update your video if that part needs to be trimmed out from a copyright claim. Um, but even better than using a short anime clip is to not use a clip at all. So either using a still image from the anime or um, just using a manga panel, which is you know, basically a still image. Um, but manga doesn't even have the same protection, I think, as anime in terms of these companies that are hired to go after me. So that, that is kind of a trend I've seen with uh, videos these days. Um, number five is to avoid new anime when possible. So you want to avoid newer anime, aka like the current like area stuff, because those shows are more likely to be protected under a company, like to have a contract with a company like Wolby to protect themselves from people just, you know, uploading the whole fucking show on YouTube the same time it's airing on television or being streamed at Country Roll. By the way, did you know that the full Lucky Star English dub is available as a nine and a half hour video on YouTube? I didn't until yesterday, and it fucking blows my mind that this thing has been up for three years and that somehow that that is okay. And number six is there's other shows also to be wary of. So you want to be careful about anything made by Toei because they are basically the Disney of anime copyright and also um, any of the big three shonen and Dragon Ball Z, which is also Toei. Um, so One Piece, Bleach, Dark of Dragon Ball Z, 
all four of these are pretty freaking risky. I think even today, though, I haven't ever tried to make a video of these. Um, but just uh, historically speaking, you know, uh, looking back at certain channels that have gotten completely buck fucked by them, you want to avoid these uh, if you can. And the last but not least tip I have is to never use the title of the show in the title or description of your video. So if you make a free rim video or a Mushoku Tensei video, do not put free rim or Mushoku Tensei in the title of your video uh, if you can. Because it makes it really easy for somebody to just type in free rim, you know, if a company is trying to find videos that are uh, using free rim and claim them, you don't wanna you don't wanna show up in those sort of search results, right? You see this even more commonly with anime recap channels that basically take an anime and uh, summarize it in like an hour or two hours. Um, and I remember seeing at one point, there was one channel that said, that asked people to not ask for the name of the anime in the comments because it would, I assume, be bad for copyright. And here, if you go, it's actually like, um, here, look at their comment. Like when they say the name, they use freaking elite speak so it doesn't, you know, show up in search engines and stuff, I assume. And those are kind of the general guidelines I have floating around in my head. I might have missed one or two, um, but you know, um, I do hope that upon hearing me say these things, certain alarm bells actually begin to go off in your head that something is not right with the guidelines I'm saying because it's actually about a year ago I started thinking about these and I realized that following these guidelines would be utter insanity. It would be completely nonsensical. Um, because <laughs> just, think about the things I've just been saying. Think about specifically the last one. The last one was the one that really bothered me when I thought about it, which is basically you don't want your video to be found. You don't want your video to be searchable. You don't want people to find your video because that will lead to be getting copyrighted, but it'll also lead to people not watching your video. And why did you make the video in the first place? If <laughs> you don't want people to find it, right? And on top of that, all the other things I said, uh, except the first one, I think the first one is one I I, I kept going to keep, but for the other five, um, all of them I take some issue with. So I'm um, telling you what anime to make a video on or not, I don't think that's right. And telling you that you need to be so transformative that the anime scene is unrecognizable. I think that's not right. Telling you that you can't use scenes from the anime you love, and you can't, and if you do, to keep it short, and if you do, to, you know, use still images when possible from that scene, I think that's not right either. Um, because why did you make the video in the first place? Oh, um, if this, this is a question I've had to ask myself. You know, I don't want to speak for other people, but for myself, I've had to think about over the past year, it's been almost a year since I, you know, quit my job to do fucking anime YouTube and then ended up totally mentally paralyzed and unable to make videos um, because I didn't understand. I didn't fully understand why, and I still don't, I still don't, but I didn't understand why I was doing this. Um, you know, I could have, I could have done anything this year. I could have, uh, I could have, you know, focused on piano. I could have made Honka Star Rail videos. I could have made RuneScape videos. I could have traveled the world. I could have worked out and tried to start dating or something, you know, could have done anything. I could have started drawing. I could have, you know, all these things, right? Instead, I was so fixated still on anime YouTube, not just YouTube, but anime YouTube probably one of the least lucrative, if we're talking just, you know, putting your job for, right? The least lucrative parts of YouTube probably um, because of copyright, because of low viewership, all that stuff, right? Why in YouTube? And I, I think this is a question for anybody who wants to make any YouTube videos, right? Why, why do this? Um, and, uh, you know, thinking about it, there's two reasons for it. First is that um, I think anime is something truly, truly special to me. Uh, you know, I, I love a good movie. I love, you know, I, I have a soul read books. I'm sure I'd still love a good book. Um, I love, you know, a good piece of music. I love a great video game. Um, 
all these things make me feel things, but I find myself the most amazed when it comes to anime. Um, I think it's because with anime, you know, with a book, you are limited by your own imagination. With a movie, with movies, you're limited by the limitation of having to use a physical camera on real physical objects. Um, with, uh, you know, with music, it is only your ears. With a video game, it's limited by technology of the time and game engines of the time. But with anime, it feels like there, there's really no limitations. Um, the limitations are external. Um, you know, people can draw anything. People can do anything with a scene of anime um, beyond even the things you yourself can imagine. And I think that's that's something that's not something that could be replicated by by anything else in the world. Um, and then one anime is amazing, but two, being able to share that on YouTube in a way where you can literally show somebody the thing that made you feel that way, I think that's incredible. Um, I think that is not something I think any other part of YouTube, any other genre of YouTube can really, really give you. So I kind of started sputtering and uh, choking on my words, but what I mean by that is that YouTube these days is very, very self-centered. So you look at the content people are making, uh, most of it is asking for your attention onto themselves. They're asking for you to pay attention to them, you to get parasocially attached to them in their lives, right? And to almost, I don't want to say, I don't have a better word for this, but to, to basically worship them, right? Maybe not, maybe not in a serious fashion, but as a, a somewhat form of worship, right? And um, I think it's completely different with AniTube and uh, for a lesser extent to like video game channels and obviously like the film category of YouTube. But... Um, in these categories of YouTube, the viewer is not asked to pay attention to the creator themselves, right? Not the, the viewer is asked to pay attention to the work being talked about, right? They're not saying, look at me, I'm so cool, I'm so awesome, I did this thing. It's, look at this beautiful fucking work. This work that I can show you exactly as is through the magic of a YouTube video, I can show you its pure, unadulterated form exactly the way I saw it. And I can explain it to you in exactly the way it happened to me. And that is pretty fucking magical. And it's not, it's not a kind of like discourse I, I really see uh, just in general, like on the internet, in the real world. The only place I really see that is in religious institutions where you know, instead of people asking for you to pay attention to them, like for instance, like a CEO, right? It's like, believe in our company, believe in my mission. No, with a religious institution, it's believe in this thing that is bigger, that I believe is bigger than me from these words that come not from me, but from a power outside of me that I 100% devote myself to. And to a degree, AniTube is like that. It's don't look at me. Look at this beautiful fucking work of anime um, that I want to show you, that I can't take ownership of, that I gain nothing from a personal standpoint by showing it to you, but still I want to show you it. I think that is the magic of anime tube. Um, and when you when you take away from that by having to disfigure a scene, by not showing scenes, by you know not being able to to talk about the anime you want to talk about, right? A lot is taken away from that. Uh, and that's not something, you know, I I want Annie Tube to ever lose. That's not something I think I can personally ever lose if I ever want to make something. Um, you know, it's something very, very precious. Um, and it's not something, and everybody has to feel that way about, right? But it's something I'm happy that people do feel that way about. Uh, and getting back on topic, you know, with copyright, right? If you're going to have to bend over backwards, you know, to not be copyrighted so that you can claim ownership of this video, um, I think that's, you know, kind of defeating the purpose, you know? You don't make an anti-tube video because 
you want to get revenue off. But ultimately, that's not what you're doing. Because if you want to make money off the video, there are so, so many better ways to make money on YouTube than, you know, ripping, ripping, you know, torrenting in like 12 episodes of anime, maybe from multiple different shows um, and stitching, stitching together over the course of a month into a video uh, for something ultimately you did make, right? There's so, so many better ways to make money. I mean, fuck it. If I want to make money, I just go back to solve right here, right? That was never the point, you know? Um, and I think that's true for the majority of any two creators, right? They, they do it not for money. They do it because they love it. Because if you do it for money, you are never going to be able to make this kind of video. Ultimately, it's not going to work. You are going to burn out. You are going to wonder why the fuck you're doing this. You're not going to be able to, to do it. So, uh, when talking about copyright, you know, I think it's important to keep keep these things in mind. Keep, you know, the ideas I've talked about, and there's certainly more ideas, right, of the people have around the realities of anime copyright, the realities that, you know, when you make a video, you don't know it. You're using stuff you don't know, and it can be claimed at any moment. And to be honest, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just something you, you're going to have to accept and it feels fucking awful, but that's the reality. And to accept that reality and to, if you love it, to do it anyways, right? Um, so what am I trying to say? You know, if you don't dig a channel, right? Uh, I don't, you know, there's, there's other people to look at, but, uh, if you go get a channel, you know, a lot of the times, for instance, like the rule about not using the title of the show, it's how we video. For the most part, he does all of this, right? For the most part, you can see he's pivoting to more manga content because, you know, all of comes from manga. Like one and two, it's probably safe for copyright rights, copyright wise, right? But he still does make the odd video about a single show where she uses the title in the title. The title of the show and the title of this video, where he, you know, will use, will do that. He will do that. Knowing it will be conquered. For instance, his Attack on Titan video, he 2 million percent knew the second he uploaded that, it would be copyrighted. I don't even need to ask him. I don't even need to ask him. You look at the music he used, he used copyrighted music because he knew going into it, this video would not be his. The second he made it, it would not, he would not have ownership over it. Of course, he probably still makes money off of it. If you really want to talk about it like that, he still has Patreon. So he probably, I don't remember if he had a sponsorship for that video. I actually don't think he did, but you know, for those kinds of videos, you can still get sponsorships, but ultimately that's not the point, right? Yeah. I don't even know if he'd be able to use this take because I keep having to fucking start and stop, probably make a bunch of cuts, but, um, I guess the point is, you know, if you've been copyrighted, I, I feel for you. I understand your pain to a degree and you're just going to have to keep, we're just going to have to keep dealing with it, right? That's, that's just how the cookie crumbles. This is the path you, uh, you choose when you make this kind of video. And I don't think it's a bad thing. Ultimately, it's not a bad thing. It's not a good thing, but it's not ultimately. I don't know, good or bad, it's just a thing. I don't want to say good or bad, be honest. But uh, yeah, uh, anyways, so uh, closing off, uh, I do, you know, just, I hope this video was helpful um, for anybody uh, aspiring to make anime videos or videos that use anime in it or anime, anime YouTube videos, whatever you want to call it. With regards to me, it's been a, uh, it's been a hard year uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but I do plan to start uploading again, so I uh, hope to catch you in the next one. Thank you. Okay, so this is me editing, and I realized I didn't actually plug in my fucking microphone there, so I'm just talking into this turned-off microphone like some kind of idiot. But uh, I think as you probably saw, I didn't really want to redo this take, so yeah. <laughs>
I do hope this video was helpful for anybody struggling with creation in general, even though that wasn't really the advertised purpose, nor the planned purpose, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just hope people remember why they're why, why they're doing this if they're doing it. So, okay, bye.